Jesus is the light of the world. May his light shine in your hearts on this Christmas day. The word of God that we're going to meditate on for a few moments today are the words that I read a few moments ago from the Gospel of John. I'd just like to reread three little portions of that to focus our attention as we discuss those words. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. In Him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. This is the word of our God. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Lord Jesus, on this Christmas day, we pray that our hearts indeed might see the light of your love for us and through that love be changed as your followers to be lights in this world. Amen. Dear friends, people sometimes give their babies strange names. I want to share a few with you from 2017. These are actual names that were recorded. In 2017, 141 children were named Tesla. 29 girls received the name Maybelline. 10 boys received the name Furious. 10 girls received the name Yo-Yo. In 2017, 51 girls were strapped for life with the name Isis. 28 boys received the name Boy. And 19 girls received the name Girl. But here's my top three. Top three. 13 kids in 2017 were named Moo. M-O-O, -O, like a cow. Moo. Six girls received the name A-B-C-D-E. That's their name. And here's my number one. 18 kids were called ESPN. We roll our heads a little bit, some strange names that are out there. But we have a strange name that we heard about in our text today too, didn't we? The Word. Did you name your kid The Word? John calls Jesus The Word. But it's not a strange name that we roll our eyes at. It's a name that John names Jesus, kind of an unusual name, because he wants us to know something very important about Jesus. It's actually a name, a title given to Jesus because he's such a phenomenal and unbelievable person. Somebody like we've never heard of or seen before. And John is unique in the fact that he's the only one who uses this particular name for Jesus. So why does John call Jesus the Word? Well, let's take a look at what he says about the Word that helps to explain why he calls him the Word. He says, the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and he was with God in the beginning. See, John calls him the Word because he wants to talk about Jesus long before Jesus was born in this world and received the name Jesus. And so he's talking about Jesus as he's before he was born of the Virgin Mary, the Son of God who lived and existed in eternity already. And in eternity, he tells us that Jesus is God and he's with God. Now that kind of boggles our minds because on the one hand, he's separate and distinct from God because he's with God. But on the other hand, he actually is God. And that's a mystery of the triune God that we can't possibly fathom. But that's who Jesus is in eternity. He is the very Son of God. 
And he was with God in the beginning. And that's where John helps us to understand why he calls him the Word. Because he says, through him, all things were made. Now, if you recall, when the world began and God created the world, how did he make it? He spoke. His powerful, creative word was how this word, world came to be. And Jesus is that word, that powerful word of God. And John's telling us Jesus was right there with the Father and the Spirit creating at the beginning. He is the creator God. But there's more that John wants to convey to us by that name, the word. Let me illustrate something for you because it has to do with the way we know people and know about them. Let's say you're walking in a park one day and you come across a young man who's maybe 25 to 30 years old, it looks like. And you walk up closer to him and you see that he doesn't have a wedding ring on, so you kind of assume maybe he's single, maybe he's not married. And you notice he has a number of tattoos on and a, a kind of gold chain. You think, well, maybe, that's, maybe he's a millennial because that's kind of the way the millennials dress. And then you notice that he's eating a sandwich and the sandwich has lettuce and tomato and a portobello mushroom in the middle. And you think, huh, maybe this guy's a vegetarian, <laughs> right? So you've made some guesses. Do you know that man? Hardly, right? In order to really know him, you have to do what? You have to talk to him, right? You have to have a conversation. Ask him questions and hear what he has to say about himself. That's how we really get to know people. The same thing with God. We can know some things about God by observation. I mean, we can look at the world that he created and know that he's a powerful God. We can know that he's an awful wise God because he made people like us who are complex people. And we can also know in our conscience that that God who created everything doesn't like it when we do something wrong because we feel that. We understand that he's angry when we do something wrong. So we can know some things about God. But we really don't know God as he is from observation. And that's why John says Jesus is the word. Because Jesus is how God communicates himself to us. How he wants us to know him as he really is. We heard that from the, the right letter to the Hebrews this morning when we heard that God spoke at, in the past in various ways. But in these last days, he's spoken to us in a special way. He's spoken through a son. And the amazing thing about the word of God the amazing thing about the way God decided to communicate with us is that the Word became flesh and lived a while among us. He dwelt among us. Now that word dwelled there, that's literally he tented or tabernacled among us. And that brings back to our mind that tabernacle that the people of Israel had in the Old Testament times, that tent that God told them to put up. And why did God tell them to put that up in the middle of their camp? Because God was symbolically telling them, I'm in the midst of you. I'm here dwelling among you. And that was a symbol for them that God was among them. But now when Jesus comes into the world, when the word becomes flesh, God is really physically dwelling among people. He is tabernacling among his people, only he's not doing it symbolically. He's here in this world with us, flesh and blood in this world. And when he came into this world, born of the Virgin Mary, the word became flesh. He got a new name. And his name is Jesus. And Jesus means Savior. And see, that's what the word needed to communicate to us about God is what we couldn't know about God is how much he loved us. What we couldn't know about God is that he loved us so much he came into this world to live and to die and to rise again for us. As John tells us in this beginning part of his gospel, that word was the life and that life was the light of people. He was the light of people because in our darkness of death comes this word 
of God. The word that tells us that he is the light. If we want to get out of the darkness, we need to come into his light. The light of his unbelievable love. But John shares with us the tragedy of our human race. Because the human race did something very bad. We hear it in three, three times in John's gospel. He says, the light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. And he says again, he was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. And again, he came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. See, when Jesus came into this world, the people on this earth didn't recognize him. They didn't believe in him, especially the Jewish nation of which he was a part. He was one of their own. He was a Jew, and yet they rejected him. They were offended at the way he came as a baby, as a humble man, rather than as a glorious king. They were offended at the fact that he told them to confess their sins, to repent and believe in him. They were offended that he didn't take away the troubles of their life like the Romans who were lording it over them at the time. They were offended by the fact that he didn't tell them what they needed to do to earn their way into heaven. And so they rejected him. They rejected the very light that came into their midst, the one who was their creator, God. Dear friends, let us be careful that we don't reject our Savior too. When we look at that little baby in the manger and all of the lullabies about a Jesus at Christmas, let us not forget that that baby is our God. He is the Word who was God and came into the world in the flesh. And let us not be offended by the fact that he tells us to repent of our sins and turn to him in faith. And let us not be offended by the fact that he doesn't come to take away all of our difficulties and all of our troubles and all of our trials and aches and pains in the world. Nor did he even come to take away the fact that we all will die. He came to give us life, real life. And let us not be offended by the fact that he tells us to take our eyes and our hearts off of the things of this world, off of the reputations and the, the goods and the stuff of this world and fix our eyes on heavenly things rather than on earthly things. Let us not turn away from him. But as John says, to those that received him, that is, to those who put their faith and their trust in him, he gave a special blessing. And that is the right to become children of God. And John's not talking about physical children. He says not the kind of children that are born of a husband's will or born of the flesh or that, but spiritual children. Born of God, he says. And notice, born of God, which means it's not even our work. It's God's work that he does for us. He gives birth to us as his spirit comes to us in the word. And that's how the word comes to us today, in his word. That humble word that we read in the scripture is how the word comes to us and dwells in us today. And as he dwells in us, he makes us his children. We're part of his family. And what a wonderful family to be part of. We're adopted children, but here is the real son of God. And it's, John tells us that son of God is full of grace and truth. This is the family you get to belong to, a family where everything is about grace, undeserved love from our Father to us, and truth, the truth that guides us into the real life, the life that makes a difference in our world. What a wonderful comfort it is to know that the Word became flesh for us. In fact, that is a special comfort, especially when we have doubts and questions in our life. For example, we might come to Jesus and say, Jesus, you don't understand 
how much I have to suffer in my life. Every day, temptation after temptation after temptation. But the word became flesh, says to you, to you and to me, oh, I do understand. I was there. I was tempted just like you are. But we might cry out to Jesus, but Jesus, you don't know what it's like to be so afraid you can't function. But the word became flesh, might remind us and say, oh, yes, I do. Remember in the Garden of Gethsemane when I sweat and my sweat was like drops of blood? We might say to Jesus, but Jesus, you don't understand what it's like to have your family turn against you or to have your friends betray you. Jesus, the word become flesh, might say to us, oh, yes, I do. My friends turned against me. We might cry out, but Jesus, you don't understand what it's like to really be alone. But the word became flesh, might say to us, I understand better than you. For my father will never forsake you, but he did forsake me on the cross when I was paying for your sins. Do you see? Jesus walked in our shoes. He gets us. He gets us because he was here as flesh with us. But even more than that, he gets God because he's God also. And because he gets God, he can help us understand God. He can show us what God is really like. He shows us that God is the light, our life, our one who saved us and loves us. It's a strange name, the word, <laughs> to give anybody. With babies, those strange names, we just roll our eyes and go, I don't believe some of those. <laughs> but let us not do that with this name. This name we need to contemplate and meditate on day and night. For this name, the word, tells us something unbelievable about Jesus. He is the way we get to know God and the only way we get to know God. Through his life and his message to us, we can see the light of God's love. And that is the light that shines in our darkness. Amen.